to the doctor yesterday to get blood work because like I've been going periodically to get blood work like for my thyroid and now for my testosterone. My testosterone is like all out of whack right now. Anyways, I went to the doctor and straight up rolled up like ain't nobody's business in my house shoes. You know, it would have been different if it was by accident, but it wasn't by accident. It was by choice because I was like, listen, it's freezing out here. I don't get out of my house shoes, but for one thing, well, two things and that's Walmart trips because I don't wear my house shoes to Walmart not for Walmart's sake but for my house shoes sake because we all know what's on the bottom of Walmart floors and for church and I am known I'm very well known I'm very well known at my nanny's church for just rolling up in my house shoes or my Crocs Sunday best from the knee up but Crocs are house shoes from the knee down <laughs> so I went to the doctor yesterday which was Friday and I promised y'all yesterday in the comments of yesterday's video which was Friday <laughs> I promised y'all that I would do a weekend video to kind of get back on track with the uploading because I know a lot of you guys have been saying how much you wish that I would upload more like I used to. So I'm trying to start off the new year by granting a wish and <laughs> being here as much as possible. It's not that I don't want to be uh, and it's not even that I don't film as much or edit as much as I used to because I do. It's just I used to post 12 minute, 14 minute, 18 minute, 20 minute videos and I could get four or five of, of those up a week no problem now my videos take a little bit more editing because i know a little bit more editing not that i'm the best editor it's still chaos <laughs> and it still and it still looks like a kindergartner spliced it together but i do put more effort into my editing so while i'm still filming and editing as much as i used to you guys aren't seeing me as much as you used to because of the fact that i am doing a little bit longer videos and judging from the comment section of yesterday's video I'll probably be doing even more longer videos because the overwhelming response to my question of if you want short videos or long videos was long videos, which if I'm being honest, it kind of shocked me. <laughs> and I kind of feel like y'all are playing a joke on me. <laughs> I kind of feel like you're just telling me what I want to hear and I'm a little bit nervous about that. But if you guys say that you want longer videos, then I will absolutely give you longer videos. I love filming. I love editing. Uh, YouTube is y'all not just YouTube y'all have become a ginormous chunk of my life I mean think about it like if we're looking at quarters like there's God which is like all of the quarter and then a quarter and then there's the kids and there's my family and then there's YouTube so you guys are in the greatest circle of life right now the circle of life and it moves us all so there's nothing I love more than there are a few things I love more than filming and editing I really really like cheddar popcorn but like not as much as y'all they're kind of equal one of you guys said you need to post, start posting more often. There's people that post three times a week and they're going to pass you by. And I ain't worried about that. They can pass on by. I will be in their dust and I will be dandy in their dust. Call me the Sandman. I'll be covered in dust. I could care less about that. But if you're wanting to see me more often, here I am. <laughs> We're going to be doing quite the bit of stuff this weekend. My mom actually just left and I meant to get footage of her being here. And I completely forgot and got caught up in the moment. She was here to celebrate Cammie's birthday. She came over and had this like little party for Christmas and it was a core memory she made core memories with my kids that day like it's a core memory that they still right now talk about how much they enjoyed that Christmas party with grandma and she didn't bring them extravagant gifts or anything like that but she went all out and cooked them favorite foods and we had like a little snack party and she did uh what was it, what was it? sneaky Santa filthy Santa sneaky Santa dirty Santa dirty Santa dirty santa she played bingo with them and they got a kick out of that they had a blast so for cammy's birthday she got him a cake and brought popcorn which is cammy's favorite and cookies and he had a blast he had a blast and the kiddos really had a blast in fact they're upset because she left early <laughs> she only stayed for a couple of hours and my daughter was like why did grandma leave so early <laughs> so we've done that today and it's kind of midday here and everybody's off doing their own thing and then also ouch Listen, I have acne all over the side of my face, and let me tell you why. It's because in the shower the other day, I found some face wash that I had never used before, and I've owned it for like five years. Not really five years, probably two, four years, three or four years. But I found it, and I didn't want it to go to waste, and I didn't think that, you know, stuff like that expired until like you opened it. I knew once you opened it, like you only have like 12, 24 months of using it. But I was like, shoot, I haven't opened it. Might as well use it. It must have been expired because my whole face 
on just the right side which is odd but just the right side has so many pimples right now and they're hurting i need to take this to nanny's house today i saw this on amazon nanny had a surgery that was supposed to happen this past week and it got canceled again for like the billionth time you guys know if you've been here for a little bit you know that nanny's surgery her knee surgery has been canceled so many times and she is suffering so bad with her knee there's reasons that it keeps getting canceled and we've got to figure out those issues before we can get the knee surgery but in the meantime she's in a lot of pain and i have tried everything i've got magnesium spray which is the kind of spray i use that i love that stuff is a life changer i've gotten her rubs i've gotten her ointments i've gotten her all sorts of things in hopes that it would help that and it hasn't so i came across this while searching on amazon i literally was like excruciating knee pain for nanny help <laughs> in the search bar and this sucker came up if this is going to help it's worth every penny it's a knee massager but it also has laser therapy in it it has a massager built into it and then it has a heating element sort of thing in it and it's smart so like it has buttons you can push <laughs> I don't know if nanny is even going to be able to tolerate it being on her knee her knee hurts so bad so i found this one for a little bit cheaper than the name brand one this is kind of like a generic brand i guess and it's fourth iq fourth eq fourth eq is what we're going to call it oh fourth eq <laughs> the reviews online were really good so i'm going to actually try it on shane's knee right now to kind of get a feel of how we can use it because i know when i go to nanny's i'm gonna have to show her how to use it so i need to know how to use it before we head over there i know a lot of you guys suffer with knee pain along with nanny so i'll let you know if this does help her so far nothing i've got her has helped her yet but we're praying over this in jesus name that it can give her some relief until we can get that surgery done. Let me try it on Shane though. Shane! Oh, Shane! Can you be my guinea pig real quick? Are you busy? I was literally about to call myself a guinea pig. <laughs> me and Shane have been like finishing each other's sentences today, which is normal. We gotta figure out how to use this. There's a truck here. <laughs> we gotta figure out how to use this so I can show Nanny how to use it. Okay. But first I gotta find out how to open it. Okay. Don't you have to like hook it up to an app or something? Do you? I mean, it shows a phone on the front. Does it? Right. No. Oh, look. This looks like a VR set. That looks fancy. And it's about to go into virtual reality. <laughs> this appears with the dinosaurs. Oh, we got cords. Kind of looks like a helmet. How cool is that? Oh, look at the little things the lasers come out of. Ooh, that's neat. Okay. Worst case scenario, it breaks my knee. Okay, don't do Best that. Best case scenario, it didn't break man's knee. <laughs> <laughs> it like, it's not like some bootleg what, like No, thing, it ain't bootleg, it's find, generic. Like on Macari or something, right? No, it's generic, but it's not bootleg. No, we paid a pretty penny for this, so it's a legit deal. No, not the pretty pennies. <laughs> you couldn't use Here, the ugly pennies. See, this is a sign that we need a horse. Like a halter top. No. You Horses don't wearing, wear halter tops. You're gonna, start wearing, you're gonna hook me up via <laughs> USB. Oh, is that in case it needs extra length? Are they plus size inclusive? Is that it? Hey. Look, we've got this extra length here, right? Yeah. Look. I think they might be plus size inclusive. Yeah, let's roll this back up really nicely. Nanny is a germaphobe. Don't ask me how she raised me. I have no idea. I wonder about that to this day, actually. <laughs> Dogs. Okay. We have this little thing right here. Did it um, not give you a plug? What do you mean a plug? No. Honey, how are you going to plug it in? Nanny has a bunch of plugs that she plugs. Yeah, but do you have a plug? No. Then how are we going to plug it in? I do. Maybe you trying to turn it on with no power? Wait, it's it has to be. It has to be charged. Usually stuff comes. Ah! What the hell? What's it doing? Is it hurting? It is. I don't know what it's doing right now. It's I feel like low. it's trying to like mix my knee. Okay, hold on. All right, huh. Get some heat going. I want some heat. No, well, don't turn the laser on. I don't know what that means. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Can you make it go higher? Oh my gosh. Alright, that's low. That's high. Is that good? I want some heat. Okay. I need some heat. 
-hmm. Yeah, warm it. Okay, so you got, is that good, doing good? Let me know. How long am I supposed to leave this alone? Like 10 minutes, I think. Y'all hear it? It sounds like it's about to drop the sickest beat of 2024. How's it feel? Like stretch your knee out like Nanny does. Oh, you put it in second gear. Man. You put it in second gear. It's got a low, medium, and high heat. And it has a auto, low, and high vibration. And it's on high right now. Then there's a way you can turn the laser on, but I don't know how. You can do laser therapy with it. Oh, so the laser's off now. Laser's on. Okay, so you hit the power button. So that one the has them both on. One has them both off, one has it where it's just this one, one has it where it's this one. This would be like really cool armor. Kind of looks like the white Darth Vader's. I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. They are stormtroopers. Okay, so you think she'll be okay with it? Won't hurt her or nothing? Huh? Shane, stop it. That's not funny. It's a way to get us sued. Now that we know it's safe, I'm going to take it to Nana. Hang on, Nanny, come in and save the day. I've got the kiddos gymnastic thing out here because I didn't want it covered in dust. It was like the apocalypse in here the other day. Shane was doing snow angels in the middle of the living room. Everybody, even my realtor, <laughs> was watching that last night. I didn't want it getting covered up because it was brand new and I didn't want it getting in the grooves and potentially causing issues with them while they're on it. So I put it out here. And then once we get done sanding and all that stuff, I'm gonna take it back in. We got enough room for it with this house. If it had been in the trailer, there'd have been no chance. I'll make a little area in the den for it. And then it's easily foldable, which is why I got that one versus the other one I was looking at. So when they're not using it, I can fold it up and put it away. I was going to come just to drop this off, but Nanny just called me while I was coming down the driveway. And she was like, I gotta see my babies. Cause she hasn't seen them in a little bit. So I guess we're all going in real quick. But I'm bringing y'all with me cause y'all are always asking about Nana. And she's always asking about y'all. Oh, look, I gave this shelf to Nanny for everyone. She's finally got all of her little stuff on it. Ain't that pretty? And that fits perfect in that area right there. Look, perfect fit. She's got her Pepsi. She put her Pepsis on there. Nan, I like your Pepsi display. All right, now. Me and Shane tried it on Shane. Oh, it's it nice. Works. It's cool. Shane, does it work? Hi, everybody. Now we're on mission to get Nanny AZO pills. And then I also saw this stuff. Y'all can't see me. Hold on. Hold on. Be right back. We're on mission to get Nanny AZO. AZOs. And then get Nanny some random thing I saw on the Google while Googling knee pain relief. And some queso fries from Wendy's because those things are banging and I've been tearing them up and I know Nanny will like them. It's 619 right now. Let's see how fast we can We're all going this stuff. on a trip, trip in our favorite, favorite rocket ship. Going through the sky, getting Nana fries. We're going on a mission. Start the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> up to somebody and be like whereabouts would you find the knee pain relief that's not for horses i am so confused i've done been down the diesel aisle i've been down the tool aisle the chicken aisle and I shall i go down the horse aisle the whole store helping us but we secured the knee pain relief we literally had all three tractor supply employees helping us find mm -hmm. that stuff even they didn't know that they sold it I know that all of the tractor supplies around here was showing that I had it in stock, but I figured the town over this town that it would have it in stock because it's not a big tractor supply as our tractor supply. So they did have it in stock. They didn't have the cream, which is what Nanny's preference was, but they had the knee patches and I'll take it. Random focus. AZO's secured. When I was there, Nanny also mentioned not having water. Wait, no, these are her favorite deer parks. Little deer parks. All right, deer park secured. Mission complete. Good morning. 
we got um oh <laughs> we got our work ahead of us <laughs> we are going to see shane's mom today for the holidays and she was originally going to come here but i looked at the ow i got a kiddo over here helping me do some laundry i looked at the weather forecast and i saw where it was going to rain and i didn't want her driving that long journey in the rain it's a lot of interstate time so i didn't want her on the interstate in the rain so i asked shane to text her and i was like how about we just come down there and come to you because while we want her to see the new house because she hasn't been up here since we bought the double wide i was like as much as we want her to see the double wide i want her to be safe so we're going to head down there instead and visit her instead of her visit us and then maybe easter because she usually visits us on easter maybe by easter the weather will be better and more of the house will be done so that She's not walking into like a, a dust bowl because that's what it is in here, especially in the main living area. I'm using this uh, fructose corn syrup. No, fructis, fructis, Garnier fructose corn syrup. Flat iron protector straightening mist. Don't be like me when I first got this. I knew it was heat protectant, but I also thought straightening mist meant it was mist that was going to straight your hair. Garnier fructose corn syrup, you really need to think about what the bottle says because some of us have one cent instead of two cents. And when we look at that, we automatically assume the spray is going to make our hair straight. And imagine our disappointment when it does not. <laughs> that being said, I didn't start using flat iron spray till you guys. Y'all, mama hand me into doing it because I just never, it was a lot of work really, you know, to just spray it all over your head. It, for two seconds it's a lot of work <laughs> it was a lot of work and i just never really every now and then i would pick up some but i'd forget to use it and then it would get lost and i'd never see it again but you guys started being like marina if you're gonna use that on your hair you need to use heat protectant marina you also also taught me to start at the bottom of my hair when i brush it and make my way up because i used to have really big mats in my hair you guys were like marina you need to put heat protectant on your hair and brush it through so because of you guys, my hair's a little bit healthier. Even after that whole debacle of me frying it off with the bleach and going platinum blonde only to for two weeks later to go this color and have to cut off a bunch of it, it's still healthier than it would have been without you guys because you did talk me into using heat protectant. I think the last time I got ready was the tournament slash, what was that thing baby that y'all went to for karate? It wasn't a tournament, it was a... It was like a parade thing with the like... The parade it wasn't a display i about called y'all a display they were displaying all their karate stuff at a parade and i got dressed then but is that the last time that mama's got ready i decided i'm not going to put in a whole lot of effort look at the rat tailage right now after the abraham well, i mean the um my abraham lincoln hair we don't talk about abraham lincoln hair you did have abraham lincoln hair <sighs> <laughs> ask a kid they'll tell you the truth i'm making that mistake all the time i'm not going to put in a ton of effort into it i'm just going to straighten my hair because i haven't straightened it in a while and i'd like to see how long it is straightened because it's very my hair is very like wavy it has a lot of body to it even though it's super thin there's a lot of it and i haven't straightened it in a while so i don't really know how long it's gotten i know how long my roots have gotten a lot of y'all ask me if i have a new hairstyle it's not a new hairstyle it's an old hairstyle that hasn't been kept up there's just so many other things i gotta do y'all there's so many other things i gotta do you know i have a teeth envelope going but not for my teeth surprisingly even though every single one of them drop down my head i got a teeth envelope for one of my kiddos for them to have braces because we have to pay for it in full and i told i told them i was like i i had a little bit going in my envelope after we paid for shane's pearly watts <laughs> after we paid for his teeth i realized how expensive dental work was because y'all gotta remember i went to the dentist one time as a kid and he didn't even do nothing like he sent me home because my mouth didn't get numb fast enough so as a kid i went to the dentist one time and then any other time after that i have only went to get a teeth a teeth pulled out a tooth pulled out i got my first permanent tooth pulled out when i was 12 years old what mm -hmm. when i was younger than colton i got my first permanent tooth pulled out on both of my mom and dad's side teeth are a really big thing so genetics play into it hygiene played into it i mean everything in the book played into it really i had a calcium issue when i got pregnant with the girls they got really bad i've always had like 
okay front teeth like good front teeth my younger 20s my teeth were so pretty even my mid 20s my teeth were really pretty they were white they weren't straight i've always had like the gap literally i've always been able to like thread a straw through my front two teeth so that's i've never had an issue with that i've actually liked it because it brings some character you know my teeth aren't like perfect like you can look at my mouth just my mouth and you can say oh that's marina i kind of like that but genetics wise my dad actually got dentures in his 20s like his teeth didn't last as long as mine have my only full blood brother he has issues with his teeth as well so like it's a thing it's a known thing you know, we we were probably back in the George Washington days. We were probably that family that had the wooden set of dentures, you know. Catching a splinter while gnawing on an apple sort of dentures. I realized how expensive dental work was though. And I told my kiddo, I was like, listen, mama has been judged her whole life for her teeth. Whether they weren't straight enough, then they ended up not being wide enough. And then they ended up being stained and, and crooked and breaking off and all this stuff i used to get a hard time for it at school then i got a hard time for it just in adult life and now i get a hard time over it on the internet but i've lived my life and i've got my husband and i don't really need <laughs> i've dealt with the hate and the embarrassment like a champ and i am 30 years old which is uh really a quarter through life, over a quarter through life i'm probably halfway through my life if i'm being honest given you know i have obesity and if I don't get my act together, I'm probably halfway through my life. But I'm at least a third of the way through my life. And they're just starting out theirs. I want to prevent them from going through what I went through with my teeth as much as possible. If I gotta sell feet pictures, baby's getting braces. How did we get on dental stuff? I don't know. I really don't know how we got on dental stuff. You were telling them about how one of your kids are getting... Yeah, how, why'd I get there? Do you know how we got there? The last time I got ready? I can't remember how we made it over to the dental side of the conversation. I don't always get ready when I see Shane's mom, but I try to more often than not because I just want to remind her that her son didn't marry a troll. You know what I'm saying? So this year I should have enough in that envelope for my kiddo for braces. And if I'm budgeting, cause I budget a few, like six months ahead. If I'm budgeting right and I stick to that budget, I will have enough for their braces this year. And once they have their braces, then girlfriend's getting dentures. I'm getting dentures. I, everybody's like, Marina, don't try to save your teeth. There ain't no saving my teeth. Marina, get implants. Implants are like $60,000. And I could buy like 2400 Big Macs with that. Not that I'm wanting a Big Mac. That brings me to my next thing I'm talking about. I started this book. So one of my friends on here, she used to be a YouTuber, but she stopped doing YouTube. But we still remained friends. Her name's Stevie. And you've probably heard me talk about her because her mama is one of Shane's most favorite people on the planet. Her mama met me for the first time in Kate's Cove. They were doing the, our first family pictures in a long time. Stevie was because she's a photographer. And her mom came along. And her mom straight up walked me. I mean, this like little holiness lady, oh my gosh, takes me back to my roots every time I see her. I was raised Pentecostal. I was raised holiness. So I still hold a lot of the holiness values. I just don't put myself into the pentecostal box you know what i'm saying she walks up to me and says the lord says well i ain't no stranger to the lord says i hear the lord says so much it ain't funny <laughs> i'll have to tell y'all about the amount of times i heard the lord said before starting a youtube channel about starting a youtube channel i heard the lord said every time i went to a new church i heard the lord said i passed somebody in the grocery store the lord said i mean <laughs> everybody was walking up to me saying basically get on youtube the lord wants you on youtube get on youtube and they had to do that because i wasn't listening i didn't want to be on youtube um it's not the fact that i didn't want to be on youtube i just felt unqualified to be on youtube I knew what God was wanting me to do. I felt it to my core. When you have a calling from God, you feel it to your core. There's no denying it. There's no hiding from it. It's on your mind 24-7. You eat, sleep, think, breathe it. So I knew exactly what he wanted me to do. But I was playing chicken and I was playing dumb. But she walks up to me and says, The Lord said a signing is coming. Well, as soon as she said a signing is coming, I, knew, I saw the double wide. I saw it in my mind. I saw it. And I was like, oh snap, like, I knew it. I knew it to be so that the signing was going to be on the double wide. I didn't know when. It was over two years ago, too. That's how long it took. It took like two years. Didn't know when, but I knew that I knew that I knew I'd be signing for a double wide. How did we get on this? I, I forget. Man, I just switched lanes on autopilot. Like, there's this book I was reading. 
Yes, thank you, baby. So there's also a time where Stevie's mama um, literally messaged me, and y'all can think, y'all can think what you want to think about prophecy, thus saith the Lord, all this stuff. Like I ain't here to change nobody's mind. I got a text message from her. I'd say about I don't know how it was right before I started bleaching the heck out of my hair. And she said, in the night, she's the nicest person on the planet, dude. She said, in the nicest way possible. Can't remember, I'd have to look back on it. Let me see if I, ah, I don't have it. Something about God loved my natural hair. And something about bleaching it or something. It's to stop bleaching it, basically. Paraphrasing it. And the reason I didn't listen to that message, in my mind, I got so conflicted because I just told you guys I was raised holiness. And I was raised, it's wrong to dye your hair, and it's wrong to cut your hair, and you know, your hair is your glory, which that's biblical. I don't believe it's wrong to cut and dye your hair. Um, those are all things that I was taught, and in my own journey with God, I, I don't believe that way. And so I really had a conflicting moment where I was like, wait, wait, wait a minute. I know that that's not a sin in your eyes. Like, I'm confused. So I struggled with that, and I didn't listen because I, I struggled with that because in my mind it was a sin and saved or not saved situation and that wasn't what it was at all he was literally warning me to stop messing with my hair because he knows the future he knows the future and he knew I was going to fry it and I was inevitably going to have to cut it and I was going to be super sad about it because I loved my long hair and I worked and prayed really hard get my long hair long that's what it was about but in my human mind this is why his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts because he knows what's coming and he knew that i was going to be super upset about the fact that i was about to that i would mess my hair up he knew that i was going to mess my hair up and he knew i was going to be really upset over the fact that i messed my hair up i didn't listen and i messed my hair up and that taught me a lesson and i'm kind of glad i didn't listen um, not because, you know what I mean, Jesus. I'm kind of glad I didn't listen because I learned the lesson of don't put your two cents into it. Like, if God says something, he just says it. And it's not for you to interpret. It's not for you to even understand a lot of the times. He just says it. And so I, I learned with that circumstance to go in blindly. Listen blindly. I ain't got to understand it all. I don't have to understand it all. God understands it all. Hi, what you doing? What you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How's How you your mom and them? Doing? The conversation I started about 30 minutes ago, Stevie's mama, I was talking to her for like two and a half hours the other night and we were talking about everything our son. We were also talking about my weight and she recommended this book and as soon as she recommended it while still on the phone with her, I got on Google and I bought it. I asked Instagram if anybody wanted to start it with me and a bunch of people are reading it along with me. And it's called the 40 day sugar fast and when i tell you guys the four word alone turned my relationship with food upside down i mean that the four word alone i'm not even on chapter one yet and i've almost ran the ink out of a highlighter i've been highlighting so much i wanted to make a meal note to tell y'all about it in case you guys want to read it with me you can get it on kindle you can also get the physical copy like I have. I was going to get it on Kindle, but then I knew that this was going to be something I really wanted to study and highlight in and stuff. And I can highlight on my Kindle, but it's not the same. Look at that! How pretty! I think I'm just going to do it simple. I don't think that I'm going to do anything extravagant. I'm just going to do it simple. Because I know Shane's mama keeps her house really, really warm. And I know that I'll sweat it off. It'll look like you're from a horror movie, the, the Living Dead Bride. Thanks, love. Just look in the floor. Look in the uh, metal thing beside the toilet. Don't ask me why my makeup's there. Do you do makeup on your toilet? No, I don't do makeup on the toilet. I'm going to use the mirror right here, so if I'm looking over here, it's not because I'm ignoring y'all. I'm reading that shirt, that 40 Day Sugar Fest book. I'll link it down below in case y'all want to do it with me. I, I'm telling y'all, I don't promote things a whole lot especially things like that it is a very spirit-led way of looking at food so i know it's not everybody's cup of tea and it's not a diet plan it doesn't tell you a way to eat it gives you suggestions but it doesn't tell you a way to eat or anything like that it by the way i ran my motor out of my mustache weed eater down so i don't know what i'm gonna do about that oh i may just have to rock the mustache today this is the way that it makes you think so with a diet you usually would 
take something you would normally eat and you would find a better version of that one to fit that diet right so instead of chocolate pudding you would find sugar-free pudding and you would replace the chocolate pudding with the sugar-free pudding well with this new mindset it's I don't have to replace the chocolate pudding at all I can allow myself to go hungry and it falls into the fasting category of, of a relationship with God it's very heavily focused on fasting and if you don't know what fasting is it's whenever you deprive yourself of something and replace it with Jesus worship time prayer you deny your flesh because your flesh is one of the hardest things to deny your flesh don't like being denied which is why you get so far when fasting one of my biggest breakthrough moments in my walk with God was after a three-day fast this is the only makeup I can find I was wanting to go a little bit paler but I'm just gonna have to use this cuz I can't find my pale makeup my makeup is everywhere right now I mean everywhere this kind of had to drag down my neck though it's definitely a very different approach than something I've ever done before food related because my issue with food I eat less than Shane eats I eat less than half of my kids eat I don't eat a whole lot and I don't eat very often but as a kid I can't say that as a kid it was a lot different I you know a lot of you guys know that I had a very traumatic childhood I got little ears right here so I can't really dive into that but if you've watched any of my past videos it's kind of filtered throughout those videos um it was very traumatic and my nanny kind of my nanny and my papa before he died um they they rescued me like a puppy <laughs> they rescued me and nanny didn't know how to care for someone with the amount of trauma i had and nanny's love language is doing things for others, cooking for others. Um, it's also giving. Nanny's love language is very giving. So when I was sad, I got handed candy. You know, when I was sad, I got handed sweets. When I was sad, and there was no limit on any of that. And nanny was so concerned about me going without because I was going without in a lot of different areas that she overcompensated with food and that's not any shade at nanny nanny was the best person to raise me i am so glad nanny raised me if i could have picked one person in this whole world to raise me it would be nanny but the trauma was new to me and the trauma was new to nanny so we neither of us knew how to cope with it or how to handle it and she did the best that she could that being said, my metabolism was shot from a very, very young age. So I have to almost starve before I can lose anything. Now, I'll eat junk. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. I don't want anybody thinking that I'm some angel who only eats Brussels sprouts. That's not, that's a lot. <laughs> that's, not, that's not it at all. But I don't eat a whole lot. So I've always had to do diets where I could replace the things I was eating with something else that was like sugar free or something like that. That's the only way I could ever see any results is if I did that to the extreme and did a radical version of the low carb diet where I get one to two carbs a day or a radical extreme level of intermittent fasting where I don't eat for 20 hours and only eat four hours a day. That almost messed me up the year before last or last year I tried intermittent fasting for the first time and in order to lose weight I had to not eat for 20 hours a day walking on my treadmill I walk on my treadmill I haven't walked on my tra treadmill since moving here a whole lot I've walked on it but I haven't been consistent with it since moving here but before I could walk a mile to two miles a day and drink only water and still hardly lose anything Weight Watchers it took me a while but I was seeing the most results that I've seen in a while with Weight Watchers because it was slow coming but I tried to replace as much as my food options that I could with zero point food options which is fruits and vegetables on Weight Watchers. I've tried everything under the sun years and years ago. I lost a hundred pounds from eating half a McChicken a week. That's what it took for me to lose a hundred pounds. That's what it took for me to lose a hundred pounds. And in that stage of my life, I was willing to do it because spiritually I was chaotic, um, emotionally I was chaotic, I was reckless, 
and I was willing to do that. At this stage in my life, I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to do something like that anymore. So this 40 day sugar fast is the most different thing I've ever tried. And that gives me hope in a way that gives me that gives me some hope that maybe maybe this will work that maybe just maybe this will work out for my good in jesus name i shared a song it's working for your good or something by maverick city worship never heard it a day in my life god literally led me to that song and every word in that song struck a chord in me and i'm telling y'all that's gonna be my anthem for 2024 2024 i don't have any more oh I don't have any more of this stuff. Oh no! I can't even see what I'm doing. This is way too dark. <laughs> I need to find my Urban Decay light makeup. It's like a alien tube or something. Alright, woof, there's hair everywhere! Alright, I'm going to uh I'm gonna do my eye makeup and I'll be right back. Remember whenever I said I wasn't going too dramatic on my makeup when my eyeliner broke on me and I had no choice? <laughs> Shane's replacing the battery in my weed eater. Don't ever tell me this thing ain't working. Look at all the hair in that thing. That's hair, mustache hair. Oh, and sideburns. Mustache and sideburns hair is all that's in there. <laughs> I wonder if I can get a... <gasps> oh my gosh. Shane. Shane, get all the hair. Look at JJ's face right now. Oh! <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> oh my gosh, that thing is good, man. Somebody needs to put this on a commercial for it. <laughs> I got it all cleared out, ready to fill up again. I kept my glasses on. This is actually just like my blue one y'all saw me wear on Thanksgiving. Nanny found this for me at Walmart because she knew how much I loved the blue one that I got. And she got this for me for Christmas and I love it. And then my earrings are from Kato like two years ago. We live here. They might as well just tag on. Tell them what we're trading in. Oh, so <laughs> there was a couple of books. Remember the books I showed you guys in the Christmas video? Alert! 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 I got six or seven percent in hooked, and I looked at Shane and I let him read that a passage. Was some rough stuff. <laughs> I'm still like, listen, okay. I get it. Everybody's got their own locks and everything, but. <laughs> No, Captain Hook, it. really? <laughs> Captain <laughs> Hook? Well, I just picture Captain Hook from the old Disney Peter Pan movie, and okay, he's goofy so, looking. So, Shane, do we pick random books? No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. I didn't even. I wanted to burn them, but they were a pretty penny. So I don't. I don't feel right, y'all. I do not feel right about taking them in here and and giving them to my case because they're going to go to somebody else. Well, they'll go to somebody who's into Captain Hook. I'm going to go in here and try to find some some unwholesome. Laura Ingalls Wilder or something. Hey, there's, some, there's some Amish books in here. Let's I'm going to find me an Amish book. You can find all sorts of stuff in there. Like, McKay's used to be heavy on the books and the electronical stuff. And now they have a crap ton of toys. Oh, another Aikido. <gasps> Aikido. Oh, and look, this is pretty cool. Look at this thing. This my, no, this is my most favorite monster. That's creepy looking. Ooh. It's from my day. Mama, I'm tiny to go. More Aikidos. Aikido. Oh, he's got a whole bunch. <laughs> Aikido. <laughs> how much is that, Cammy? Well, Shane, look how expensive oh, they are. Eight bucks. What? This is where I got my first ever camera in the camera section. 
They got laptops. Oh, look, they got Apple. Shane sees the One Piece. I found the One Piece. <laughs> the One Piece. I was looking here in the games for some board games because Nanny mentioned on the phone that she wanted to play some board games with the kids. But I'm afraid they won't have all the pieces. Which ones do you want? Which ones do you want, Cammie? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not ten. Because that's a hundred dollars worth of Aikidos and then it's not going to happen. They have podcast stuff. Ooh, get all of these G.I. Joe in the case. That's cool. It has a raw sticker on it. Come on, I know. The old Mary they didn't sell oh, that Ross old. for $71. Look at the Mary Poppins back there. I know my Ross. They would never do such a thing. I sold them that. Always like to, I heard a hook. What is that? Oh. You know I always you know what that is, don't you, huh? Bring arts figure out there. What's a bring Those are usually about a hundred fifty bucks. How much are they there? <laughs> I'm gonna head over towards the Barbie dolls because one time I found like this 1990s Barbie doll that I was obsessed with. <gasps> this is a 1999 version. How neat. I found the kids. 1999. We just literally got done seeing that at mom's. I know it. It's 1999. And then this one. Look, this one is a 1997. I had this as a kid. Now's the time where we find you some. Oh, it's the third book in the Digging trilogy, the Tunnels tri trilogy. Oh, look, here's another one. What is, that, is that the fourth? This is the Tunnels uh, series. What this one that? right here. Um, I read this book whenever I was before I had the girls, second. and I liked it. It's a middle grade book, but it's really good. Let's try to find yeah. something. You guys will like. Okay, this is not <laughs> a children's book. Ninety-five cents for this one that has She's also a gold medal. We're not all new here. We know my values, right? Okay. I picked this up because I'm like, oh, that looks really cute for the kids. A young Samuel Johnson and his Dotson Boswell are trying to show initiative by trick-or-treating. They don't mean any harm by their flirtation with the underworld, but when they unknowingly call forth Satan. Nightmare at the Nightmare. I wish I could have had the first one of these because I actually, it was either Net Galley or Penguin asked me to review a copy of the first one of these, but they don't have the first one mm -hmm. here. Shiver, kind of likes that one. You just does not need to be here. I'm gonna shop around and see what I can find, and I'll show you guys a little mini haul when I get done. Mini haul. <laughs> I promise y'all a book haul. I'm about to tap out for the night. It's past my bedtime. It's like 9:30. It's past my bedtime. I'm about to tap out for the night, but I promise y'all a book haul. And I said it's gonna be a teeny haul. I believe I remember myself saying that. And let's just go ahead and say past Marina needs to repent just a little bit because it, it's not a very small haul, but it's not a very big one either. I'm I was about to say I'm trying to be picky with the books that I buy. I am trying to be picky with the books that I buy, to but when fair. you take me to my case to be fair. and I find stuff I've never seen before. To be fair, I did buy you one book. 
Yeah, Shane bought me one book. Let me let me show you. So I'm gonna start off with the kids first, though. They've been loving chapter books. They are flying through them, and some of them are even reading books twice. So we needed new chapter books. We're just we're going through them really fast this year. I got the Button War. Patrick. It's spelled P-A-T-R-Y-K. And surprisingly, that's what got my attention while reading the back of this, is the weird way that they spelled Patrick. <laughs> and something about, listen, listen, Patrick and Jekyll, Patrick and Jurek are in this little Polish community. And I think they're Russian, but they're in this little Polish community in like 1914. And they find, Patrick finds a button on the ground and Jurek gets really jealous you have my attention like you gonna write a whole 200 page story about somebody being jealous over a button you got my attention and you got my money too all two dollars and 95 cents of it but then there's a big war that comes and i believe it's the world war one comes to poland and it's like this pack of seven boys are like friends and and they all make a bet to see who can find the coolest button off of one of the soldiers <laughs> but this is where it gets interesting listen the competition escalates from stealing uniform buttons on a wash line to looting the bodies of dead soldiers and setting up a daggone ambush. Did you hear that? Yes, no other than Jurek is leading the charge. I guess if you're going to get jealous over a button found on the ground, you would be crazy enough to lead a charge of looting dead bodies and ambushing soldiers. He will do anything to... It literally says this. I'm Not me. This. He will do anything to... He wants to basically be the button king. <laughs> button king? The button king. The button king? The button king? The button king. <laughs> but good old Patrick, who found the first button to begin with, Finders Keepers, he tries to slow Jurek down, and he's like, hold up, you're getting a little crazy. I was down with the stealing buttons from the soldiers off the wash lines, but I draw the line at loot and bodies. But this dude's supposed to be, or this person... Abby, this person's supposed to be like a master at historical fiction, and I love me a good historical fiction. Yeah, there, that's just who's by right there. A Abby? Then I got The True Confessions of Charlotte Doyle for 50 cents. I ain't never heard of this either, and I'm hesitant to get chapter books I ain't never heard of because of the daggone summoning Satan with a wiener dog book that I showed you guys in my case. I, I don't ever know what is inside of the book, so I'm always hesitant. But my kiddos know if they've got questions, I got answers. And if I don't got answers, we'll find the answer together. So they know if something comes up in a book, come and talk to me. Um, and give them legitimate answers for their legitimate questions. Because nobody wants to, oh, that's just how it is. Like, unless it's a God thing, almost everything you can find an answer for. So I don't know who Charlotte Dole is. I don't know if she's a real person or what. But on the back, it's based in 1832. Okay, so it's another historical fiction. But she's supposed to travel with two families and then mysteriously cancel their trip. Like, both of them. So this 13-year-old girl, the parents weren't parenting. 13-year-old girl finds herself as a lone passenger on a ship with a... It's a big word, crew. With a mutinous, mutinous crew and a cruel captain. I think it's how to say girlfriend's gonna go through some stuff. Girlfriend might... Throw the captain overboard, too. I would if he didn't get his act together. I'd be like, listen, I don't even know what he does in the book. <laughs> I'm making a whole scenario in my head. I'd be like, listen. <laughs> when I was younger, I tried throwing Shane down the stairs one time. I could take a captain. Then I got Walk Two Moons for 95 cents. This one is the winner of the 1995 John Newberry medal and i know that's a big deal so you have phoebe's story you have sal's story and then i think below you have sal's mama's story her family basically thinks it's impossible that she's not going to find her mama but she's not giving up and the last book i got for the kiddos is last in the mohicans which is one of shane's absolute most favorite movies of all time he loves that movie and colton collects these um great illustrated classic versions they're very old school like they even the uh it has a lot of artwork in them. He's read Heidi. He's read Oliver Twist. Almost every other page is artwork. And he loves the artwork. And they're so old, but he digs them. So anytime I find these in McKay's, if they have one he doesn't have, I always grab it because he really likes these. Now, this one's going to be weird. I'm going to get to my books now. That's what we got the kids. So my books, Queen of Zombie Hearts. There's, I have a reason. I have a reason. Look how pretty it is naked, though. 
Look at that. Oh, I love it. So, years ago, I read The White Rabbit Chronicles by Gina Showalter. First book is Alice in Zombieland, and I flew through that series. It's four books, I believe. This is like the third one, I believe. Every time I go to McKay's, I look for them and they don't have them, but they had this one, and it's the hardbacks, and I've been wanting to get the hardbacks. So once I get all of these in the physical copies, I'm going to do a reread of the entire series. I literally even got Lacey to read this and she loved it. And it's super YA. There's like no nothing in it. It's literally zombie fighters. It really is zombie fighters. It has nothing to do with Alice in Wonderland, which is a big thing that people disliked about it. And it has negative reviews on Goodreads about. I remember seeing a bunch of negative reviews saying, why is this Alice in Zombieland? It's nothing like Alice in Wonderland. So the market, like the Queen of Zombie Hearts, Queen of Hearts, Alice in Wonderland, the marketing is so off. It has nothing to do with Alice in Wonderland. Nothing. The main character's name is Allie. So I don't know what that's all about, but... I would not let that deter, detour, deter me, deter me from reading this series because it was banging. I enjoyed it. I didn't even really like zombies at the time. I really don't like zombies now, but it was entertaining as all get out. Y'all want to read Alice in Zombieland with me? We might do a, like a buddy read, like a book club, book club, Alice in Zombieland. Everybody else my age is reading Kristen Hanna and all these really in-depth books. And I'm going to come up and say, let's read Alice in Zombieland. I got The Rocks, which I didn't, I've never heard anything about this, but I read the summary on the inside while standing there looking through books. And it's about, it's like a dual love story. It's a double love story over the span of 60 years with a crap ton of secrets. Something happened on a honeymoon and the husband and wife like hadn't talked since and they only live like a few minutes from one another and you dive down into this story as to what happened on the honeymoon night and why their relationship got rocky. I also looked for it on my library app. All of these I looked for on my library app. Some of them I got the audiobook for so in case I'm up working in the house or something washing dishes and I'm really into a book. I don't have time to actually sit down and read it. I can put it on audio and listen to it while I'm doing dishes and stuff. I like to do that. I like to have both the audio book and the physical book, ebook, physical book or whatever because I'm always busy and I can't always sit down and find time to read but if I have the audio book I can have it playing in the background. I got the Sundown Motel and it takes place in uptown New York hey, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Um, I was gonna tell you I just ordered your other three zombie land books. Huh? Found them on eBay. How much? All for five bucks each. Hardcover. All in very good condition right. and from sellers that I told you to stay off eBay. I realize that, but you needed them. I'm not supposed to do that. You butthead! Butthead. I love you. I love you. I always feel bad like I got you that daggone king of greed <laughs> and didn't get the other two. I had I to think get the other two. I looked it up. Please no. <laughs> I'm not gonna no. tell you. I'm not gonna tell you. Okay. This is set in upstate New York. I think it's in like the eighties. Yeah. Nineteen eighty two, upstate New York, and something about a funky motel. Most motels are funky. <laughs> This girl gets a job as a night clerk and she realizes real quickly like something is not right. It's dual timeline because while it takes place in 1982, it also has a dual timeline of taking place in 2017. And if you know me, you know I love a good dual perspective and I also love a good dual timeline. I love it when a book goes back and forth and you get a view of it from current time and then past time. When I was younger, I made a promise to myself that I was going to read the, I forget what it's called series. Incarnate, Asunder, an infinite in there by what jody meadows yeah jody meadows i never got around to reading it when i was younger and i saw these and i was like you know what i actually borrowed the audiobook for this one so i'm gonna read it soon while i have it for 14 days i think um these two don't have an audiobook with my library it is ya and i don't read a lot of ya anymore because i don't feel really young adulty anymore in my 20s that's all i read was young adult it'll be nice to get away from the adult books for a little bit though because those can get heavy and 
This is another historical fiction. It's Maria by Eugenia Price. It goes over historical and political events that shaped the life of this woman named Maria. Her real name is Mary Evans, but she goes by Maria. She's an independent woman. I-N-D-E-P-E-E-N-D-N-T. Do you know what that means, man? And she's an independent woman in the Colonia South. She's in North Carolina? No, Charlestown, South Carolina. She takes care of herself. She takes care of business. She's married to a soldier. But then, something to do with the Spanish-Cuba conflict. Ends up, we go through her timeline. She gets married three times. There's a lot of drama going on. A single mom who works two jobs, who loves her kids, and never sots a gentle hand with the heart of a fighter. Maria's a survivor. <laughs> Maria! Look how thick this is. It's huge. Let's see how many pages. Ooh, and it's that ragged edge paper. I love that kind of paper. My Crave books have that. 700 pages. I'm reading an 800 and oh, 900 page book right now, but 700 pages. And listen to what it says on the back. I don't know what I had. I don't know anything about anything about anything about this book. I don't even want to know anything about anything. The back of it says, The day that I first saw you at the Gilly Station... You smiled at me, then you said my name, then you touched me, and since that day I have somehow known, though I never saw you again, that my last thought, this side of the grave, would be you. Take me out. Like, how romantic is that? She literally just saw them at the station. Saw them one time. Never saw him again, but she knew right then that her last thought, this side of the grave, was going to be them. <laughs> That's right, my alley right there. That's right, my alley. Make me cry with the romance. That's up my alley. I got, we begin at the end. That just sounds like I'm going to have a good crime fit somewhere in there. This is about a 13-year-old, right? Yeah. What's up with all 13-year-olds? This is about a 13-year-old girl named Duchess and a sheriff. And their worlds kind of collide and intertwine together. She tries to take justice into her own hands about a certain situation and he has to get involved. How far can we run from the past when the past seems doomed to repeat itself? And then the last one I got is the Ever After. The Ever After and I got it for six bucks. Oh, 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 I forgot what this one was about. I read it in the aisle that I found it in and I was like, the tea okay so this woman and her husband are happily married they've been happily happily married okay have a great dynamic going on have kids together have a life together they've built she is in love with him she thinks he is in love with her and then one blooming day he's been cheating no i don't know what if he's been cheating or not but she finds a text <laughs> message <laughs> <laughs> she finds a text You're message on his cheating her. She finds a message. I don't know. It doesn't tell us what kind of message. I'm assuming he's a cheater, cheater, pumpkinator. She finds a message on his phone and it changes the dynamic of their relationship. And she's like, Who is this? What kind of man am I you married to? You've been where? With who? With who? You've been where? You've been where? With who? With who? Oh. Mm. For real. For real. Oh, really? Oh, really? That's how you feel. Asking all, all these questions. questions. Asking all, all these questions. questions. Why are you asking all these questions? questions. Making statements. statements. Assuming. Now Josie feels as if she is standing at the edge of a sharp precipice. Precipice. Oh, I'm going to struggle reading this. As she looks back at pivotal moments in her relationship that got her and her husband to this point in their marriage. That one's going to tear me up. So if I come up on camera one day, tore up to pieces, you know I just read that book. <laughs> Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning. Even not, whatever it is, wherever you're at, know that I love you. But Jesus loves you so much more. I'll see y'all later.